Hello everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Inside Machine Recruiting with Gobu Design. I am your host, Gobu Design, and as always, before the, we start the show, uh, I just wanted to give a huge thanks to all my followers on Twitter, um, everyone who is a subscriber to my newsletter, and everyone who's registered with my site. Uh, just a huge thanks to you guys. Uh, much to discuss on the show. Uh, we're going to be discussing the uh, newly released ESPN Junior 300, plenty of Michigan targets uh, included in there. Uh, some updates on 2016 prospects and more developments coming in with a possible 2017 commitment that I mentioned on the last episode of the show. Okay, so ESPN 300 for the juniors was just released today. Plenty of Michigan targets. That's very good to see. Uh, uh, I'm actually really excited to see that there were a lot of guys from the state of Michigan included, uh, showing that Michigan high school football has a lot of talent. Uh, I must warn you, uh, you shouldn't tell Dan Mullen any of that information. Uh, he might get upset. But yeah, uh, of course, this was expected. Donovan Peoples-Jones uh, cracks the list at number 12. Highest ranked guy in the state of Michigan. Uh, he's a top Michigan target. Also guys like Jalen Kelly-Powell, uh, Joshua Ross, who is a uh, brother of James Ross, who's currently on the Michigan roster. Uh, plenty of guys that are top targets in the ESPN Junior 300. And again, I'm so excited to see guys from the state of Michigan there. That's just great. Really excited about that. And again, I just wanted to mention, I talked about it for a little bit on the last show, uh, I really expect Michigan to have a great class in, in the 2017 recruiting cycle. Uh, we're already seeing a great class here in 2016. 2017 could be even better. Again, I'm talking about top 10, looking into the top 5, could even end up in the top 3 if everything goes according to plan. You've got guys all over the ESPN Junior 300 that the Wolverines are eyeing. Uh, I just want to talk about Tariq Black, is a 2017 wide receiver who just named the Wolverines his leader just recently. Uh, plenty of guys that the Wolverines could end up landing. Things are looking great in the class of 2017. I'm excited. Uh, the fan base should be excited. The coaches, the coaches and the staff are probably extremely excited to move on to 2017. It's going to be looking great. But we're still trying to focus on 2016. This class isn't finished. This class could end up being even better than it already is. So I wanted to get to a quick update on 2016 prospects. Now, I got some good news and I have some bad news. Uh, so, I'm going to deliver the bad news first. Not necessarily bad news, but it's more of a cooling off in a prospect's recruitment. And that prospect is uh, 2016 excuse me, offensive guard target Terrence Davis out of Maryland. Now, Michigan was extremely high on his list. They still are. Michigan was the presumed leader. He's been high on the Wolverines for the entire recruiting pro process. And he hasn't been shy in saying that. He's been public saying that the Wolverines are... His presumed leader, uh, he's been high on the, with the Wolverines the entire time. But things have kind of cooled off with Terrence Davis. Uh, I thought that the coaching staff would be pushing him to make a decision sooner than what it looks like he's going to be making a decision. He's got officials planned to schools like Alabama. He just took visits to Alabama, unofficial visits to Alabama and Georgia. And things are kind of cooling off. The Wolverines, they, they got some serious competition here. It's going to be difficult to land Terrence Davis. It's not as sure of a lock as it was just a couple of months ago. A couple of months ago, I would have told you that Terrence Davis will definitely be in this class. And I thought that he would announce sooner rather than later. But now, things are looking that great. But that happens. That happens. I still, there's still a very good chance that the Wolverines land Terrence Davis. But the only reason I'm, I'm thinking, right, as of right now, I wouldn't include him in my next class prediction, which I will be releasing soon. Due to the fact that you got some other guys that are very interested in the Wolverines, some guys that are going to be visiting soon, and uh, you could definitely see his, uh, you know, his assumed spot. I mean, the staff obviously hasn't made it public that that's his spot, but that's what everyone's assuming that that's Terrence Davis's spot waiting for him. That his spot could be taken by someone else who who wants to commit. And again, this is all about spots being available. There isn't a numerous amount of spots available. We only got a couple more spots. So, I mean, I expect the coaching staff to maybe try to push him for his commitment. 
I don't see him committing early. I see him taking it longer, probably after his senior season. He's got an official plan to Michigan. He's going to be visiting for the Ohio State game. Great atmosphere. I love a decision to visit. But I always thought he would be visiting as a commit, and I think right now that he's most likely going to be visiting as a high target still. But I, I, I'm curious to see where things will go if his spot is taken. Uh, I'm trying to see if the coaching staff will still take him. I believe he's a must-take in my opinion, so I think they would take him. But there's still plenty of high-caliber guys that we want, and there's just not necessarily enough spots. So uh, I'm curious to see how things are going to shake down, how things are going to work out for the Wolverines, wonder who's going to end up where. Uh, you can't get them all, guys, so uh, that's an issue. But I think the coaching staff knows what they're doing. Uh, there's been reports that there's already gray shirts in play. Of course, we got that commit from Montreal, Benjamin St. Justy, and uh, still not sure whether he's going to be in the 2016 or 2017 recruiting class. He won't be able to know till next year due to the difference in school systems in Canada. Uh, not sure what the situation is really there, but I, I, I think he's going to end up as part of the 2017 recruiting class. That would be more beneficial to, to the coaching staff right now to get an extra spot in there. But again, Terrence Davis, things have been cooling off. As of right now, there's still a good chance, still a very good chance for him to end up wearing the maize and blue. I would call Michigan his leader still as of right now. Another guy I wanted to get into talking to is Devin Bush Jr. Uh, there's been rumors of him making his commitment mid-August. Also been some reports of him saying that he wants to hold off. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he held off making his commitment. But I still think he'll announce probably around late August. And right now, I'm still thinking things are looking good for the Wolverines, as in really good. Of course, his two teammates committed to the Wolverines is a Florida State legacy, guys. Gotta watch out for Florida State. Uh, schools as, such as Georgia and Auburn are kind of in the mix, but I don't really think they'll have a, they have a good chance of landing him. I think it's a two-horse race, as I said in the last show. Michigan, Florida State, it's going to be a fight to see who can land him. And again, right now I'm sticking with my gut prediction. I'm still thinking that Devin Bush Jr. is going to end up wearing the winged helmet. Uh, I think he's going to go with his commits, with his friends who are commits and make a Flanagan trio and I think that will be huge for next year's class because there's uh, some Flanagan targets who are considering the Wolverines and I think this is just great as in going down south to get prospects in the state of Florida. We haven't gotten that many prospects under Brady Hoke and now Jim Harbaugh has done an amazing job, fantastic job of recruiting in states like Florida, Alabama. He's done a fantastic job. It's really been unbelievable to see how fast a program can change in really so, such such a little time. Um, everything w was going down under Brady Hoke. Everyone had the lowest morale I've ever seen in a while. And now, right now, it's just literally, it feels so great to be a Wolverine, guys. Uh, things are looking great in terms of that. Another 2016 prospect uh, I was going to talk about was... <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Uh, you know, that was the last 2016 prospect I was going to talk about. Uh, a quick, I'll give a quick update on that at the end of the show. Wanted to talk to you guys about... This is urgent. Sorry about that. More updates on 2017 commitment. Possible 2017 commitment. I told you guys about this in the last show. That I had been receiving some news. That there are more than one... More than one prospects that could drop sooner rather than later for the Wolverines. And there's been some development since that top wide receiver target, Tariq Black, out of Connecticut, recently just named the Wolverines his leader. I always thought the Wolverines were very high on this list. Wasn't necessarily sure that they were his leader, but the Wolverines have been recruiting him hard, extremely hard. I believe he's once said his childhood favorite was Ohio State. So that tells you how, how well the coaching staff is pursuing him in that Michigan is his current leader. And I've been talking with some other guys. Uh, my hunch was that, there, that the first 2017 commitment, besides Carter Dunaway, who's already committed, would be an in-state guy. Still sticking with that. Still definitely think it could be. There's a lot of guys who are very high with the Wolverines. 
and I'm thinking it could happen at any moment now that one of these guys could pull the trigger and, you know, just kind of propel this 2017 recruiting class because no one's joined Dunaway. He's been, he's been committed for a little bit. And we're just waiting to see someone join Dunaway because Michigan needs to start catching steam, catching fire in this class. As you see, Ohio State has already done an amazing job in the 2017 class. I believe they're ranked number one in the class. I think they have one or two five stars, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they're doing a great job, including some Michigan targets, uh, who I was very disappointed to see, of course, go to Ohio. But uh, Ohio State's done a great job. I mean, I'm not going to lie. They are the top-tier program in the Big Ten, if not the country right now. They're going to be continuing to have great classes. But so will the Wolverines. As I've said before in numerous articles, and this is my personal opinion, Ohio State's going to stay good, guys. They're a great program. They have a great coach, Urban Meyer. But I think the tides are going to be turning in the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry sooner rather than later. I don't expect it to happen this year, but I think Jim Harbaugh will definitely get a victory against the Buckeyes while he's, Mich he's Michigan's coach. I think he may actually get more than one victory against the Buckeyes, and that's what we should be aiming for. We should be aiming for the big goal being Big Ten champions. We want to be Big Ten champions. We want to be champions of the conference. Then we can start aiming for getting into the playoff and national championship runs. This team, this university, this program, this prestigious program is capable of of going all the way. We just need to give them time. we got the right guy now. We've got great players. We're recruiting great players. We're going to get great classes. But we got to give them time. We have to give them time. Bottom line is that great things usually don't happen overnight, guys. It takes a while to perfect something. So we got to give Coach Harbaugh some time. But I think Michigan's going to be there, guys. With the classes we're bringing in now, these next two classes are going to be amazing. So in two to three years' times, these guys are going to be sophomores and juniors, and they're going to be experienced, they're going to be in their prime in their college football careers, and the Wolverines are going to be looking fantastic. Uh, as I said in my previous article, before my last episode, I broke down Michigan's 2015 schedule, and I have the Wolverines going 8-4, I think that's a reasonable assumption, guys. Reasonable prediction. Uh, many people are saying uh, that the Wolverines are going to be going undefeated, only one loss. Uh, guys, you, that, those are really, right now, unrealistic expectations. Uh, the excuse that Brady Hoke went 11-2 his first year, uh, as I said in my article, quote for quote, it's absolute rubbish. It's rubbish. It's hogwash, guys. The bottom line is that Brady Hoke won the Sugar Bowl that year with Rich Rodriguez's players. Uh, that would have been the fourth year of Rich Rodriguez's tenure if he would have stayed. And as I said before, when it came time for Brady Hoke to develop his players in his own system, he couldn't do it. He simply could not do it. So we got to give Coach Harbaugh some time. That's what I just wanted to say about that subject. Again, just a quick hitter for you guys. Something for you guys to expect. 2017, again, can't stress this enough. It's looking good, guys. I'm expecting a commitment to drop soon. You heard it here, guys, on Inside Machine Recruiting. That commitment could be happening anytime now. And 2017, right now, looks like it's going to be better than 2016. And this has been a legendary class, really. The way we've recruited, it's just been a great thing. So... Before we end the show, guys, just want to talk about some quick updates on my website. Uh, there's now an option for you to register with my website. I recently upgraded the site. So there's going to be some VIP forums going along with my blog, GBD Insider. And this is completely free to register, guys. Completely free. Uh, I'm going to be covering VIP topics that you're going to see in other websites. And those websites are going to be charging for your membership. I won't be charging you a single dime as of right now. Right now, I don't plan to charge anybody anything. So all you have to do 
is register an account with my site, type in your email, type in your name, and you're registered. You have an account on my website, and you can view the VIP forums that I will be posting starting this week. Whenever something happens in the world of Michigan recruiting that everybody needs to know, I'll be posting it in a VIP forum, and I'll be posting the link on Twitter, and you guys will have access to it as soon as you register. As always, I will continue to be posting blog posts on my blog, GBD Insider. That doesn't mean, due to these VIP forums, that doesn't mean that the blog posts on GBD Insider are going to be any less entertaining or any less important. It's still going to be very important stuff. Uh, I'll try to distinguish, you know, kind of shake it up a little bit where I'm posting and stuff like that. I expect me to continue posting weekly. I'm going to try to continue posting weekly. Same thing with the show. I'll be posting this show on the blog, and as always, I'll be giving you the links on Twitter. So, I think we're going to wrap that up, guys. This has been a great episode of Inside Machine Recruiting with me, your host, Gobu Design. Uh, this video will be up on YouTube and up on my site. Uh, if you want to subscribe on to my YouTube page or leave a like, I would really appreciate it. As always, please follow me on Twitter, at Gobu Design. Visit my website, gobudesign.weebly.com. And we'll see you next time for the next episode of Inside Mission Recruiting with Gobu Design. This has been Gobu Design and Go Blue.